Hello everyone, this is Jozef Knight here and in this video I am bringing you the third video of the CFD summer series where I talk about open foam and CFD related topics. Now since the first video was very successful with the uh, uh, thermal simulations in open foam and I got a lot of comments from you guys, I decided to change the topic of the third video back to the thermal simulations because you had specific questions about that and talk about that one specific boundary conditions that you usually will use for thermal simulations where you want to specify for example a power that you uh, want to define. So the boundary condition that you are looking for is very well hidden in the source code but a short uh, search can help you or just take a look at the path that I have here. So in your open foam installation, whichever you want uh, or whichever you use, it is in SRC, turbulence models for some reason, then in the compressible turbulence models, turbulent fluid thermo models and in the derived FV patch fields, you will have the boundary condition external wall heat flux temperature. Now if you open up the C and the H file, so the header file and the C file, then you will see something like this. So this is the header file and then this is the actual source code. Now I don't want to review the source code here. What I want to talk about is the usage of this boundary condition. So if you want to spec uh, specify a power or a heat flux over for a wall, then this is the boundary condition that you use. And there is a very long description in the header, which is very unusual for <laughs> open foam. So it is now more or less uh, well uh, documented what to do. So important is uh, that you have uh, three modes which you can choose in this boundary condition. The first mode is the power mode, the second is the heat flux mode and the heat transfer coefficient mode. So for the power mode you specify a capital Q in what? For the heat flux, you specify a, heat f a lowercase q in what per uh, meter to the power of 2, so square meter. And then in the third mode, you specify a heat transfer coefficient as well as an outside ambient temperature. So I have here a couple of ex uh, the three examples that you will want to use. So if you want to specify the pow uh, power uh, in uh, the uppercase Q, then you write uh, external wall heat flux temperature for the type of the boundary, then you select the mode. And then this is the difference to the other two models here, you type in power. And then in the next line, you specify the uppercase Q. If you write here flux and you specify an uppercase Q, then you will get an error message that the uppercase Q is missing. If you have both the upper and the lowercase Q, then the power will ignore the lowercase Q and use the uppercase Q and vice versa. And then you can specify a value in what. Now, uh, I want to, and the same is then true for the flux. So you can specify a value for the heat flux. And in the source code, it says fixed power. It's not 100% sure because this is implemented as, so the Q is implemented as a function one <laughs> and uh, the, the lowercase Q as a patch function one, as well as the heat transfer coefficient. And the ambient temperature uh, for, uh, is also implemented as a function one. So function one is something where you can define, for example, a time dependent behavior of Q and also in the third mode of the ambient temperature. So instead of just saying constant, you could define it as a CSV file or ju just as an alternative, you could write here table and then specify it as a table. So for example, at the time zero, so the first column is the time 
and at one second and uh, two seconds and then let's uh, i usually like to define it at a very uh, long time which is outside of your simulation and then for example at the beginning there is a very low power so for example 10 watts then uh, within the first second we keep it constant at 10 watt uh, at your wall and then you can increase it between seconds one and two from 10 watts to 1000 watts and then you keep it constant throughout your simulation but with that you can change uh, or define a t uh, you, it's a linear increase between two time steps and um, but you can use as many time steps as you want so you can just create an excel sheet with a very long list and then copy paste the table or there is also the possibility to um, cr create a csv file and then load the csv file okay so just for so this is possible for uppercase q and ta you can also do this for lowercase q and h but as I mentioned, this is a patch function one. And as far as I know, you can even define here a non-uniform distribution. So rather than de describing the t time dependence, you can also uh, describe the, um, the spatial dependence. So if you know the ordering of your faces, you can define manually a list of uh, numbers which then correspond to your faces uh, on that boundary and then you can define a, a spatial distribution but uh, for that you have to know what is the order of the faces so I, i've never used that so, so this definition of um, the spatial definition but the t time dependent uh, definition I did use uh, now several times. So if I just go back to the original files and then continue with the original input, so then everywhere you can add very thin layers. So this makes sense, for example, in a conjugate heat transfer simulation where you uh, where you have a very thin layer. For example, if you're simulating a window where you have the the, the first glass and the second glass and in between you have um, uh, air and you don't want to specify the, the thickness of the glass so if you don't want to model the glass as well as the the air um, uh, um, individually because they, they are geometrically much much smaller than your entire geometry then you can define them as very thin layers and then here here you define the thickness of your layers so here i took it from the source from the source codes these values so this is here but so this is something in meters so if your glass is one centimeter thick then you will type in 0 0.01 if your air is two millimeters thick then you type in 0 0.002 and then i don't know something else and then an another layer that you have and then you specify the thermal conductivity so th these are the kappa layers um yeah so this is gives the thermal conductivities of these layers with this unit that you can add but this is optional so you can just if you don't have these layers you can just delete that entry and then leave it as it is then the next uh, line kappa method this is if you're not running uh, conjugate heat transfer simulation but something uh, um, uh, um, uh, for example a uh, fire foam simulation uh, some uh, um, a single region simulation where you do have the temperature dependence um, then there you can also use this boundary condition but then you don't need the kappa method then you would just use uh, these uh, lines so the kappa method is uh, important for conjugate heat transfer simulations so if you are uh, defining this boundary condition in the fluid then you say that the thermodynamics is defined by a fluid thermo if you define this boundary condition in the solid in your conjugate heat transfer simulation then you will write here 
solid thermal instead. Okay? And then you have this value, which is an initial value. So you can use this dollar internal field or you just uniform, I don't know, 293.5, so 20 degrees Celsius, as you prefer. And the same is then true for the flux and the coefficient mode. So you can use the th thickness la these layers as well as this kappa method and the value. So for the, the third, the heat transfer option, there you define two values, as I mentioned, the ambient temperature outside of your geometry. And so what you can assume there to be an uh, ambient temperature and then the heat transfer coefficient. Now, these are the values that you will find here in this example. Now, if we go through the properties that you can define, so you can see here the mode, Q, uppercase Q, lowercase Q, H, T, A, this is something that we already talked about, even the thickness layers, which are optional. And now we come to a couple of points that are not mentioned here. And maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know. So you can use a, a relaxation factor for the wall temperature. So this is something if you have outer correctors and outer correctors and you do five of them, 10 of them, then within a time step, you can use under relaxation. The def default value is one. So you don't under relaxate. Um, and then we c uh, and again there is the kappa method and then uh, the kappa value so this is for conjugate heat transfer simulations important and then there are these three values emissivity qr and qr relaxation so this is something if you use a radiation model and these entries are a bit problematic and i had several talks with different people who have problems with this boundary condition in combination with radiation. So the emissivity defines the, uh, the radiative flux emissivity of that wall and the default value is zero. For QR, so, you, um, so if you are using, uh, QR defines the name of the radiative field. Usually, if you don't know what this is then and you use the radiation model, then it will be called exactly QR. The default is set to no, none. So if you use a radiative uh, ra radiation, then you have to enable it by adding a line QR and then call it as it is called, namely QR. So the field is called QR. This is how you define it. And then you can also additionally under relaxate this QR value. Now, and this is where some people say that this boundary condition does not work properly. I don't want to comment on that. So please let me know in the comment section below what is, if you have some experience with this boundary condition in combination with radiation models, what are your experiences with that? Do you have some problems, instabilities? Usually the problem is that the temperature drops below 200 Kelvin and then the simulation uh, exits even within the first time step. And I did uh, experience that also myself and I don't really have a, a solution that works for all the time. So if you know something, please comment below the video and then I'm happy to, if you have a solution for the combination of this boundary condition with radiation, I am very happy to do a tutorial with your inputs on that. So this is the boundary condition that you will mostly use for thermal simulations, except if you fix the temperature at some points, then you just use fixed value, but you don't need the fixed gradient boundary condition to define a uh, heat flux, for example. So that was what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, I will post these three options below the video just so you have a reference and then you can just copy paste it alternatively you can just look up the header file and then copy paste things from here so that was what i wanted to talk about today uh, please like this video if you like this input and please also forward it to your friends and if you are not subscribed then please hit 
the bell button so you get all the notifications when I uh, release a new video. So with that, I would like to thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you next time.